we'll do a review of the USS Curry NCC 42254. This is the Star Trek official collections number 116, and this is my second video because the first one the sound didn't work. And it was a good video. This is a magazine's very good this time. It's always good, isn't it? And here we go. It service 2370, 380 meters, 300 crew, goes warp 9.6. And let's see. The primary and secondary holds of an Excelsior class vessel were made in an unusual way to produce the main structural elements of the USS Curry. While the pylons and the warp cells from the Miranda class provided the propulsion components, the Reliant. It was hastily assembled at various classes of ship in order to fight the war against the Dominion. The Curry fought with the Second Fleet for a short time. Let's see. The, the, the Curry looked a bit ungainly with its secondary hull jutting out beyond the saucer section, but it was effective. It was effective coupling. Starfleet needed all the ships it could muster to fight the Dominion War. There's Excelsior, one of my favorite designs. Which actually, was, I hear that was designed to be ugly, but it ended up being gorgeous. The curry seen here in the bottom right of the picture was badly damaged and fighting the Dominion. Uh, a large part of the saucer had been blown away. As you can see there. Almost looks like a speedboat, doesn't it? The USS Fredrickson NCC-4211 on an Excelsior-class ship fought alongside the curry in the second fleet. It suffered even more than the Curry. Captain Sisko commanded the Second Fleet. More great graphics. Beautiful. In 2374, the battle weary Second Fleet retreated to the relative safety of Federation space. The Armadas included several mongrel ships, such as the Curry, the Raging Queen, the Centaur, and the Elkins. And, guess who designed it? Dan Curry. USS Curry was created in record time by Dan Curry when a flotilla of damaged ships was needed for an episode of Deep Space Nine. Didn't get too terribly detailed in there. Oh, look at that mesh. Dan Curry is a man of extraordinary talents, and his work as visual effects producer made him one of the true unsung heroes of Star Trek. He worked on The Next Generation and continued on through Enterprise. Yeah, oh, he worked on Star Trek, too. Just regular Star Trek? Okay. Let's see here. Dan Curry, seen here in the back row, second from the right, poses with the rest of the visual effects team for this first season of Star Trek The Next Generation, along with Mr. Gene Roddenberry. Pretty good. And uh, he made a lot of things that we did not, I did not know. Uh, it he created the opening titles for Star Trek for the Voyage Home. Um, I remember that episode. He, this original weapons robot from the arsenal of freedom pr proved too heavy. He created a new one from objects he bought at a local store. Curry liked to create storyboards for the effects that he, he had to shoot. He believed it helped everyone in the department to have a clear idea of what he wanted. He storeboarded the. That was the uh, in the first first when they first met Q, I think. And here it is, uh, Curry scene here where the effects uh, rigger Dennis Horner set up a vapor cosmic event that can destroy time and space. Oh, I remember this episode. Uh, this was finished result of the anomaly that threatened to tear space apart that Curry and his team filmed. They combined multiple nitrogen elements to depict a rip. 
in space, while light beams were shot into a room filled with smoke to complete the effect. Hmm, a room filled. He designed the Batlet. Pretty cool. He also directed the second unit on Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise. As a trained artist, one of Curry's favorite jobs was creating uh, paintings such as the one used in Next Generation uh, episode, The Inner Light. That was a good one. That made me cry. That was such a good episode, wasn't it? The Inner Light with a flute. Uh, and then this, it was seen in uh, Time to Stand. So, the warp engine of the Jim Howard attack ship was used by Captain Sistone's... Uh, oh, Time to Stand was uh, dedicated to Brandon Tartikoff, former chairman of Paramount. Okay, let's take a look at this ship. Now, my first video that didn't have sound, I opened up the box. This whole warp engine and pylon had broken off. And what I did uh, really quickly is I took some uh, hot glue and dabbed on there. Hot glue comes off so easy that uh, just to do this video, and then I'll uh, break up my uh, CA, my uh, um, super glue, and uh, fix it cr properly. I could say something to Eagle Moss, but I mean, uh, it's just glue. I just glued on. It was just glued on in the first place. A couple of pegs held it in place, but they were broke off. But it's happened a couple of times with Eagle Moss. It may not be their fault, it may be the shipping. But it was broken in the blister pack. Yeah, my uh, hot glue job there wasn't that great, but hey, it did the job temporarily. Look at that little bitty ass tacking, isn't that great? The paint application is... Eagle Moss does a really great job. I don't even know how to do it. It's almost like it's printed on with a... Ink, uh, some sort of laser printer? Ink jet printer? I don't know. How, how did they get that font so small? Look at that. Even if they got little nipples for the lights. Of course you can see the seams there. Let's see, can you see down inside there? Get a flashlight. So it looks like down inside there. So they've taken the uh, neck from here and put it underneath that saucer there, and then that looks like the shuttle deck that was on the rear and put it on the front. And we'll look at the back. There, there's the impulse engines. Oh, I see what they did. Those look like the impulse engines from a refit. They got some paint down in there, didn't they? You can see where the uh, neck should go. Well, what do you think about this design? Let me know. So what do you think? Do you like it? Hate it? I see I've got a string there for my hot glue. I use hot glue down here to to keep the stand to keep the the stand in the base a lot of times. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing.